I'm not wearing enough makeup. You're not using enough of it. You're not wearing enough makeup. Not enough concealer, foundation, bronzer, blush. You're not wearing enough makeup is what I would tell my clients when I worked at Ulta. One thing that truly baffles me about TikTok, right, is that nobody can make up their mind what's going on. One day you're not wearing enough makeup. One day you're wearing too much makeup. One day your blush should be up here. One day it should be down here. One day you should be prepping your skin like this. One day you should be prepping it like this. The information that gets recycled and put out so quickly is, is like a lot. It's a lot. This new kind of trend in particular, or this new advice we should say, that people are giving out on TikTok is that you are not wearing enough makeup. The reason your makeup doesn't doesn't look like how it does on people on camera is because you are not wearing enough. Let, let me let me show you where this came from. Using your makeup isn't coming out the way you want it to is because you're not using enough of it. Not enough concealer, foundation, bronzer, blush, and especially powder. You have to use powder. Before I started using powder, my makeup looked like shit, like actual shit. But once I started, I can't go back. You literally can't go back. And also you have to blend. You have to blend till your wrist fucking falls off. Blending is probably the most important part of makeup. It's kind of like a loose thing because the reason your makeup isn't looking like how you want it to, and that, that's like, well, how do people want it to look? I got, sorry, some lash glue hasn't dried properly and keeps pulling my bottom, um, waterline up. But there's a lot of advice going around and a lot of people are trying this. Here's the deal, right? You know what, let's watch another one. I know it sounds crazy, but you're not wearing enough makeup. Never mind the fact that my face and the rest of my body are two different colors, but I'm going to talk to you about why your makeup is not lasting. You're not wearing enough makeup. I'm just going to pause it there. Makeup, the longevity of how long your makeup lasts isn't to do with the amount of makeup you are wearing, first of all. And actually, the more you wear can be a hindrance to that. My name is Shelby, I'm a makeup artist, and I am a makeup artist here on TikTok. I get messages all the time, and I have people that sit down in my chair and tell me, my makeup never looks like this when I do it myself. Or they- That's why we get paid to do it. <laughs> it's like when you go to a hair, a hair person, they do your hair, it's like, oh my god, I can never do this at home. That's why they make the money. The makeup never lasts throughout the day, and I'm going to tell you why. This amazing, perfect foundation brush, by the way, is from BK Beauty, it's the 101, and look how flawless my face looks already so good so a lot of times when i'm watching other people's videos they're asking you know why their makeup's not lasting or i'm getting messages from people or people are sitting in my chair i always am like you know tell me what your routine is like and they tell me they're using all these really great products and they're using the right tools but you're not using enough that is the problem as a pro makeup artist, my number one tip is always light layers because that equals longevity. Yes, okay. Maybe I misunderstood what she said before. A lot of people go in with way too much makeup from the get go, right? And it's like, oh, it's not lasting my skin. It's like, cause nothing can grip to your skin. And any other pro makeup artists that follow me here or that watch this video will agree that you have to wear more than what you typically wear. If you want it to last longer, you want it to show up in pictures especially if it's for like a special occasion like your wedding day. I disagree with having to wear more if you want it to last longer, but I do agree with having to wear more for it to show up in pictures. A lot of the time, if you see in like magazines and stuff, it's just, do they still make magazines? Or on TV, where makeup artists do no makeup makeup, the model is wearing a lot of makeup. It takes more makeup to make it look like you're not wearing makeup than it does to make it look like you have makeup on, you know what I mean? But on a regular everyday basis, you get to lunchtime and your makeup is already gone. Like, where did it go? It's all, your face is eating it. My base routine has gone viral a couple times here on TikTok and I have people tag me in videos of them recreating it. And one thing that I notice is that it looks really good, but you're not using enough product. So while you have the layering technique, it doesn't really do much if you're not using enough. I see the girlies using like one pump of foundation and then the tiniest dot of concealer and thinking, this is what this will do. <laughs> so yes, one pump of foundation may not be enough, depending on, on the look you want, right? If you want full coverage, 
Full coverage doesn't always mean low as a product. If you're using a full coverage foundation, you're gonna need like two or three pumps, right? Depending on what style you're going for. But full coverage doesn't always mean use loads of product. It means build it up. Like she said, light layers until you get the coverage you want. If you want makeup that looks like how it looks online, which it never will do by the way, because even like phone quality and lights and stuff like that, we know it doesn't look like that in real life. It's good initially, but it's gonna wear down throughout the day. And even this technique that I'm talking about might not be for everybody, it might not be for you, it might not be for your everyday makeup, but when you want to do something on a special occasion and you want your makeup to look makeup-y, use more product. And as long as you're prepping your skin correctly. I love that she said, if you want your makeup to look makeup-y, wear more product. That makes sense to me. If you want your, and I have had clients where they have been like, I want it to look like I'm wearing makeup. But even then you have to be like, hey, what does that mean to you? Do you want to be able to see that you're wearing foundation? Do you want to be able to see, you know, strong brows? Like what, what does that mean to you? Which is a whole nother video in itself. So if you want to see that, let me know. But you can handle wearing all this makeup and it's not going to look cakey. It's not going to look heavy. It's not going to look bad. And you're going to love the result and it's going to that depends, right? Stay all day and you're going to be so happy that you decided to put on a little bit extra. I just added another layer of bronzer and now I'm adding another layer of blush. This time I'm using a powder version of the same kind of liquid color that I used. This is that layering technique and look, my base is looking so good. There you go, bestie. If that doesn't answer your question, I don't know what will. Wear more makeup. Hope that helps. Love you. Bye. Okay, great. Here's, here's the deal. Another thing I think people have to consider as well is that longevity of wear of your makeup, 100%. Oh my God, sorry. I have to keep moving. My eyelashes are itchy. Does anyone get it where your lashes are itchy? Depends on your skin type as well, right? So oily skin, we know we have to prep it a certain way. Dry skins, you know you have to prep it a certain way. Otherwise, your skin is going to drink up moisture in your foundation, in your concealer, and it's going to look crusty and dusty on the skin. So it, it really is is a lot of it down to prep of your skin. If you are not ensuring that oil isn't ruining and breaking down your foundation, it's gonna go patchy, it's gonna go crepey around here and it's not gonna look great. So again, longevity of wear of your makeup, and this is whether you're on set, doing a client, doing a wedding, doing your own, doesn't necessarily mean you put more on to make it look, to make it last longer. You put more makeup on to make it look like makeup, but it doesn't mean that your makeup is gonna last a longer time. If your makeup looks like this, but you want it to look like this, these are tips that will transform your makeup. Let me just stop that there right away. <laughs> right away. So this is Katy Perry under flash photography, under everything like that. Her makeup is done in a certain way that people know it's gonna look that is not meant to be, it's not meant to be that zoomed in, right? She's gonna be on the stage, she's gonna be on cameras. Makeup works differently in front of different cameras. Your phone your real life, my camera, isn't the same as a studio camera or anything like that. And then we go to this image, which has a completely different situation. It's obviously been edited. You can actually see around the eye area where it's been edited, especially here. Not not crazy, but it looks beautiful. And I don't, I don't care that people edit their pictures unless they're selling something. It looks beautiful, but that's a completely different lighting situation, so. You want it to look like this? These are tips that will transform your makeup and give you that smooth, flawless finish every single time. I share beauty tips every single day, so make sure you hit the follow so you don't miss out. To prevent cakey makeup, always use a moisturizer and an eye cream before any other products. Put foundation on the back. True, people disagree with eye cream, but I like eye cream for eye makeup because, for makeup, sorry, because it's just a nice texture for the eye area. <laughs> That's it. Your hands and then apply it to your face. This gives you so much more control on the coverage. Mm -hmm. To sculpt the face, use a cool tone contour under the cheekbone. Mm -hmm. use a um, yes, I, I hate pumping foundation on the face. It's annoying. It's wasteful. You're going to use too much. As the first makeup artist said, and now this person is saying, control, light layers and build up. And the cool um, tone contour, yes. Use a worn tone bronzer above a cheekbone for a healthy glow. Tone bronzer above the cheekbones for a healthy glow. Start doing blush according to your face shape. I put mine on the upper cheekbones going towards the temples. For an easy eye look with a lot of dimension, use a light shade on the inner corner, a medium shade in the middle, and a darker shade on the outer corner. Use a concealer to clean up around the edges of the lips and give them a lift. To make the eyes look a lot bigger, take a brown liner and put it on your bottom lash line. Yes, sorry, people think that by putting eye makeup under your eyes, it's gonna make your eyes look smaller. It really doesn't. It really opens them up. So if you 
just use a little bit of um pr like product under the eye like she said a light brown something very delicate even a bit of your bronzer it really does make a difference the difference between what she would have done here versus what the person would have done on Katy Perry for example again is layers Katy Perry would have been wearing a lot a lot more foundation a lot more powder oh a lot more powder bear in mind somebody is going to be constantly touching up and repairing her skin that can lead to some patchiness and it doesn't always look great this is nice though and i don't consider that a lot of makeup do you do you i personally don't you are not wearing enough makeup you and your makeup to actually look like this you need to be applying more than a dot of concealer and just because you're applying more again sorry again again all these images, beautiful, but edited. And just because you're applying more makeup, it does not mean it's gonna be cakey. Yes, 100%. Just because you're applying more makeup doesn't mean it's gonna be more cakey. There's nothing wrong with full coverage, right? It's how you get to that point. So your makeup can be more cakey. Your makeup can look cakey applying a light layer. Your makeup can look cakey applying a full layer. It depends what you do in preparation for that that foundation. I don't want to hear it. It all comes down to the application and how you actually use the products. Yeah. Prepping the skin, I'm just using a moisturizing primer. Make sure you're using the right primer for your skin type. I have dry skin, so a moisturizer works better for me. It comes down to yeah, so again, you don't always have to prime. Um, and you can zone prime on your face. So for, for me, for example, I'm very porous on my nose and my cheeks. So I can use like a pore primer, very shiny on my forehead. I can use a mattifying primer up there. You don't always have to prime. If what, using a um, serum, for example, is a good primer for you, then go ahead. Using your base products, if you've got dry skin, don't be using a matte foundation. It's gonna dry, it's gonna cling to your dry patches, and it's not gonna look cute. The Arium Sweetener Foundation, it's more of like a luminous, glowy foundation, so for my skin type, it works better for me. It's more of a medium to buildable coverage, and yes, don't come for my shade match, okay? Like, we we, we know right now, okay? We know. I'm self-aware that I look like an umpa right now, okay? Just trust the process, okay? It's not it's not the end result. It's just a PC04 brush from Peach and Cream. This is really nice for so blending in your foundation. You can also swirl this foundation in with this brush, which I like. Get rid of any of that excess foundation. Foundation. You can also blend it on your neck, of course, and on your ears, because we know I need to shave that. It really helps to blend in the foundation rather than just sitting on top of your skin. It's very important, as she said, to make sure that your makeup is being pushed into your skin. I love using powder brushes, for, just like she is here, for this. Anything with like a stubby tip is, is preferable because you can push and blend, push and blend. You don't want a layer on your skin because it will slide off and that's where it comes into it's not going to last long because you haven't applied it correctly or in a way that is allows for longevity. Well, on cream bronzer, I feel like it just completes the makeup. It's that like in-between filling. You're wanting more depth to your makeup and you're not just wanting it flat. Cream bronzer, then powder bronzer, it's gonna help that. I mean, I've been there and tried to use less products for these makeup looks. It just doesn't hit the same. So this in Instagram makeup or TikTok makeup is a lot of makeup. I am wearing a lot more makeup now than I would during the day or to an event or in real life. And I'll change up my makeup depending on the lighting, if I know it's gonna be yellow lighting. Yes, I Google the event space before and check. That's just how I am. It's in my blood. I would do that for weddings. I would do that for clients. I just do it. You can change your foundation. You can change it up a bit, make it warmer, you know? So it, everything does ch change, right? In certain occasion, you wear more makeup to achieve a certain look light so it's really bright in it. Not a super matte concealer but it does dry down really nice and then setting it with this powder. I like to really snatch the outside of my eyes and then I'll also go down my nose as well just to like reverse contour it a little bit. I always carve out underneath here as well. Out of time please just buy a powder puff okay it will just save you time and life. Load it up tap off the excess then go in to set it. So this is where we're first setting the face. We don't want it to cling to the concealer and make it all patchy. Just a little bit of powder bronzer. You can use more or less if you want to. This is basically just to set the cream bronzer in place for me anyway. You set a cream with the powder. I literally just tap, like see how it's like. Can I just say, I am so happy people are baking less and less. She just set it with powder and that was it. No baking and none of this stuff. Again, she's pushing the powder into the skin. That's exactly how you get your makeup to look good without looking cakey. Yes, it might be a lot of makeup, but does it look good? Yes. And if you think it doesn't, there's the door. There is the door. My girlies get it, okay? And if you don't, not my problem. Listen, us English people definitely have a way of doing makeup. <laughs> so this advice of wearing more makeup is kind of like, it's yeah, I mean, so far it's correct. If you want to achieve a certain look, you have to wear more makeup, right? 
You're not wearing enough makeup is what I would tell my clients when I worked at Ulta. They would come in complaining that the foundation I sold them did not work. This was the foundation they would try to return, but this goes for any foundation. If you want looks like this, you're gonna need way more than just one little pump. Here's what that pump gave. Gorgeous, but it's not enough. They would say, why does my makeup not look like yours when I bought the exact foundation you're using? I would sit them down and show them just how much foundation I was using plus how to layer your products. I'm gonna add more foundation on this side, not this side, so you can see the difference. So here's how my makeup would look versus theirs. Both beautiful, but there's a huge difference. So for every cream product, you need a powder product to top it off. But why? <laughs> but why? Why not just use a powder product? There's no sense there. That doesn't make sense super dry skin so if i don't top off these cream products with a powder my skin just uh, soaks it up okay. okay then just use the powder you don't need a base for powder blush and powder bronzer that's never been a thing and you it doesn't really need to happen because the powder you can build up the powder and buff it out so it looks seamless that makes no sense to me i, I just can't an orange blush on brown skin. This one's called Leading Lady and it's from Rem Beauty. I know it may not seem like these girls are wearing a lot of makeup, but they really, really are. Getting our under eyes and our entire face with translucent powder. Tap off the excess. Now setting that cream contour. Setting that cream blush with NARS Torrid. Let me show you the- But what, but you're going over with a- I, I can't, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't, un okay. I don't understand the logic and the science between how that works with your skin and how it works together with a product. Hey you guys, here's the final look. Now I'm gonna finish off with a setting spray. This will help melt all those powders and creams together. By the way, don't sleep on the Milani Dewy. It's so good. But like always, what do we think? What do we think? I think it looks great. I especially love that lip. Okay, so I'm- I'm- here's my conclusion to this you're not wearing enough makeup situation is that people are seeing neutral looks and thinking it's natural makeup and being like oh you don't need to use that much and, and especially like edited images and stuff like that because as I said earlier to get like no makeup makeup you kind of need a good amount of makeup. I think what's happening is in my mind is that people gen- and this isn't like me to say but people genuinely aren't wearing enough makeup to achieve the look they want to achieve. Not saying you all need to wear more makeup, but to achieve that look. If that's the look they're going for, and they're using very little makeup, then they definitely aren't using enough. Because to me, what some of the people did in this video is it's quite obvious that that's how they achieve that look with that amount of makeup. You know what I mean? Right or no? Full coverage, a uh, full glam, loads of makeup, won't always be cakey. If you prep it correctly, and do everything in between. Adding a lot of layers, the, the main thing you want to be crisp, right, is your foundation. Where you go from there and what you did before is what's gonna mess it up, right? If you didn't prep it correctly with your skin type, bearing in mind the finish off the foundation, whether it's a matte, a glowy, whatever, and what skin type it's made for, which a lot of people miss out, it's gonna ruin your, your makeup. If you go over the top with, you can put on too much to a point where if you keep building up, cream, 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 and then loads of powder, it can look cakey and it will look cakey. C powders don't always absorb cream, right? It doesn't completely mattify forever. Like our foundation, it, well, so when we put powder on it, it isn't completely matte the whole time. So you have to have some kind of scientific reasoning behind it too, and this is why it's important to learn how products works, right? I think it's just building up, from, from what I'm getting from these people, that have kind of like answered this question. I think people just aren't building up enough and they're doing it incorrectly or they're going in full full and not building up layer by layer. These tutorials were useful for people that want to achieve that look. That's what I'm gonna say because it was useful for people that want to achieve that look. Very confusing. Let me know down below, do you think this was a lot of makeup, what people were using in that video to achieve that look for every day? Let me know. Thank you so much for joining me. Do consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. As always, tag me in anything you see online that you think I'll be interested or message it to me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.